Hello traders, this is Nimbus Capital here. How are you guys doing? Today, we are going to discuss the recent cooling measure on properties, prop next stock price, and what to expect moving forward. The cooling measure was definitely an unexpected news. The huge gap down on PropNex has caused many traders and investors to be like scrambling for answers. Like, oh my God, oh my God, what's going on? What should I do? And for those who know me, like my Patreon subscribers, I have a big holding for PropNex since the early days when the price was around 60 cents way back in late 2020. Since then, right, we have a total of six trades on PropNex during its rally and with this recent drop i have fully exited my position and you can be sure that as of making this video i have no biasness on my analysis here firstly right let's take a look at the cooling measure itself and then we will dive into prop next revenue model the main driver for this cooling measure was to curb the second and third property purchase and also foreign purchase. We can see that the ABSD for all second property and beyond right have went up significantly. So for Singapore citizen, um, the second property purchase, the ABSD have gone up by 5%. For the third property, it has gone up by 10%. And for PRs, it has gone up by 10% for second property and 15% for third property. And for foreigners, the ABSD have a fixed 10% increment from 20% to 30%, regardless of whether is it your first or your second property. So <clears throat> obviously, we cannot have more than one HDB. So the biggest impact will be on the private property sales and especially uh, private sales to foreigners. So in terms of this, cooling measure, um, the ABSD, right? There, there is no impact to the first time buyer if you are both Singapore citizen or even PRs, that there's literally no, no changes. So the second part of the cooling measure, which I believe is slightly minor, not, not, not a big deal, is the TDSR and the LTV limit. So I'm not really going to go through what this TDSR and LTV limit really. I'm sure there's a lot of resources out there that explain what they are but what you have to know is both of these affect how much a buyer can loan from the bank so that's basically about it and when i am discussing about tdsr and ltv limit right when i say that the impact is minor what i'm referring to is the impact on prop next stock price so in that regards i believe this change have minor contribution to the prop next stock price. However, I'm sure from individual to individuals that, that, that this, this change might be a major change. So that, that's not something that I want to go into. Lah. Okay, so when we, when we want to um, <clears throat> look at this, right? I think this, this change may, mainly will affect the locals and PR who are looking to buy their first property. But when we take a look at the rich upper classes, right? Those, um, be it local or foreigner, those who are buying, like, don't know how many, um, like million, tens of million dollar worth of property or the good class bungalow, right? Be it local or foreigner, you have to understand that when they buy a property in Singapore, how they go about dealing is a little bit different. How they obtain their mortgage loan is different from how normal people like us go about doing it. And most of the time, right, these people, these rich people, they are usually taking out mortgages by choice, meaning they have the cash, but maybe they want to use the cash to fund their business or, or whatever, like, or maybe they just want to retain the cash flow. So they are usually taking up the mortgage by choice. And it is not like us, we have to take the mortgage because we have no choice. We don't really have that kind of purchasing power to buy up the whole property by cash. That's why we go for the mortgage. But things are a little bit different for the upper class or these um, very rich big buyers. Lah. <clears throat> so that's why I believe that in terms of how this is going to impact the prop next stock price, right? I don't think it will affect much because it mainly affects the locals, lah, the, the locals and the SPR. Lah. So uh, it is more, more, more to ensure that 
first time buyers, right? They do not rush into something that is out of their reach, be it due to like FOMO, like fear of missing out, or maybe due to greed. And it also helped to ensure that um, the first time local buyers have still have reasonable cash flow after their mortgage. Lah. So it's mainly to protect the us protect us and especially in covid times right when job security can be put into question we want to ensure that we are not taking up a huge part of our income on the mortgage loan itself so now we can agree that the biggest impact will be on number one the private property and number two the foreign buyers and the second and third property buyers lah. so these two groups of um people are the one that is going to be affected the most. So let's move on to prop next to see where the majority of the revenue is coming from. So up until right now, right, uh, prop next have only released their quarter three 2021 result. We have yet to see the final year result or in, in another words, the quarter four result. Lah. So looking back at Q3 2021 report, we can find a few things. So earning for the Q3 and nine months, right, it has increased by almost 100%. So this is very a great news for Propnex. And from what they say in this um, press release, right, both private resale and HDB resale saw strong growth. And from their own mouth, Q3 was one of the quarter which has the highest number of private resale transactions over the past 10 years with 5,362 units being changing hand. And the last time that they saw this kind of volume was way back in second quarter of 2010. So you will realize that 2010 is just recovering from the housing market crisis. So this is actually quite significant. So in the market outlook, Prop next state that for the whole of 2021, right, uh, they are projecting about 13,000 private new home sales and 18,000 private resale. So they state that this figure represents an increase of 30% for new homes and a whopping 67% for private resale compared to 2020. And they are expecting private home price to continue to go up by 6 to 7%. And on the public housing front, right, the HDB resale volume is about 30,000. So when we are comparing the this 30,000 unit resale in HDB to the 18,000 resale in private, it is like comparing apples and oranges. We can't really compare the number of unit to unit. But when we want to see where the big revenue for Propnex is coming from, right, we can definitely tell that it is from the private sector, mainly because it saw 67 increase in resale private property. But for HDB resale, there is only 20% more compared to the 2020s number. So this is where we can somewhat deduce that the majority of PropNet's growth is coming from private resale. Okay, so the thing that we do not know now, right now, is we don't know if this private resale, are they first-time buyers? Are they second or third um, property owners? Or are they like foreign buyers? So this is something I believe is a little bit sensitive data and I don't think Propnex really released this kind of data. <clears throat> so we can't really go through that. <clears throat> but let's move on to the chart for Propnex. So during the period where Propnex earning increased by 100%, right? <clears throat> so for the entire of 2021, we can see that Propnex stock price has gone up tremendously. And if we look at from January 2021, Propnex went up 187% at its highest price of 2.2. Then even after the drop due to the cooling measure, right, it is still up by 114% at the time of making this video. So the time of this Q3 earning release is crucial when we are looking at the chart because that, that report that we went through just now, all the positive stuff, right, it was released in 10th of November 21. And it was mentioning all this strong growth, positive projection, but we don't really see a positive response from the share price. In fact, it continues to head down, even though not by a lot, 
And this is an indication that market have already priced in all these positive growth and positive outlook. It means to say that market have already expect Propnex to do this well. And if Propnex does not do this well, right, it's going to just drop all the way down. It's, it won't be even going to continue to go, 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 go up. Lah. So if Propnex fail to live up to its positive outlook or maintain the growth, right, uh, we could see a further drop in the price. And we have already seen that after the cooling measure, the shareholders are already assuming Propnex might not be able to maintain its growth next year. That is why the price get down so much. And even though business may be still good, even though Propnex can still deliver profit, right? It may not be as much as what the shareholder expect. So it is always expectation and actual result the market will always move first with expectation. And when the actual result come out, the market will readjust. So that's why sometimes even when a company is making big profit, right? The market actually expect even bigger profit, hence the price readjust and it start to drop. So these are the things that we need to be careful about. So no doubt that from this chart, we have a good recovery from the gap down. And many are claiming that this is a knee-jerk reaction, but we have to be objective. And this is one of the reasons why I decide to make this video after I'm no longer have a personal vested interest in this counter. Lah. So from a technical perspective, we have several bearish structure that is forming. And firstly, right, even after the price have rebounded, it is still below the support level we have also established a lower high at 1.99. Meaning that even if the price can go above the support level again, there is a possibility of creating another lower high, which will then confirm a mid-term downtrend. While many traders might justify the huge volume and price recovery on the 16th of December candle, a dive into the 15-minute chart will reveal that the recovery and price do not really have much volume behind it. And because of that, right, I am a little bit skeptical. From the fundamental aspect, we know for a certain that the pri private property sales are a major revenue source for PropNex. But however, right, we do not have data on revenue from for foreign buyers or second and third property buyers. And I believe these are, as mentioned, sensitive data that are not released to the public by PropNex. Lah. So the question here is that we already know earnings will be impacted ne negatively by the cooling measure, but we do not know by how much because we have no data on the foreign buyers and the second and third property buyers. So since the cooling measure news only came out very recently, right? We might have to wait until the quarter one 2022 earning to see the actual earning data, the impact of this cooling measure. But the coming FY report presentation, it could give us some insight. Maybe the CEO might want to make an announcement to like help make sure everyone remain calm and give some insight on certain numbers. Uh, that, 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 that's something we have to wait until the final year result comes out, lah, which I believe to be maybe in next year, next year, January. So we, 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 still, we still do not really know the, 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 the how, how negative impact this cooling measure is. So until then, right, I think PropNex share price will continue to be muted as in there wouldn't be much movement, there wouldn't be a lot of volume coming in as shareholders are still working in the dark. So we don't really know what's going on yet, but we do know it is negative. It is just that how negative is the negative or maybe can PropNex surprise us with even bigger growth and then of course then we will have the price start to rebound back by a very significant amount, but that, that that's something that's something that is um out of expectation and something that I'm not really confident that it can happen uh, <laughs> based on what we are seeing seeing right now. And the the the, the fact that there is no follow-up bullish action from the 16 December candle, right? Is a bit concerning also. It yes, it's rebounded, but after that, uh price is coming back down again now. Uh, so 
um, we have to be very careful. So please take care of your risk, guys. And sometimes, right, it can be hard to let go of things that we have held on for so long, but we have to keep to our discipline. So to summarize, in terms of technical analysis, the chart structure is not looking good despite the recovery after the big gap down. I believe it can continue to go further downwards. And until the support is retaken or until we see a higher high, I'm, I'm not that confident in PropNex already. And whether or not it can be supported by fundamental data, we still have to wait until maybe three months or six months to see the actual impact of this cooling measures. Lah. So until then, please stick to your stop loss. Please stick to your trade plan. Do not do funny, funny things like averaging down, buying some more, or all, 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 all these kind of things. So please take care of your risk. <laughs> so uh, if, you, if our videos have been useful to you, right, uh, please like and subscribe to our channel as we are still growing like a, like a young boy. So do, do subscribe to our Patreon also if you wish to receive um, trade ideas, weekly market update and other in-depth analysis videos. Lah. The links will be in the description below and have a great week guys and stay safe, be it physically or be it in the market. Okay, thank you everyone.